Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Follow the links in the description below. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving and this, in case you are unaware or I've forgotten somehow, is my 1973 Rover P6 V8 with the 4.6 litre Range Rover P38 engine shoehorned into the front end of it. And the last time we saw this car on camera, it was a very, very happy day. We even did the happy dance for it because it ran. It drove for the first time in about a decade. It was moving under its own steam. It's also tax and MOT exempt, which means it's one of the few cars I've got on the fleet which are free to drive. So I can just take it out any time I want. I will get MOT though, just because I'd like to be sure it's safe. However, the other night, just for the sheer fun of it, the buzz and excitement of taking something as cool as this out down a country lane for five minutes. I thought I'm going to take it down the country lane for five minutes. All was good. It was pulling strongly. The engine was smooth. It was even changing gear and didn't seem to be clonking too much. I think just the tired, dry rubbers are, are finding their, their way again and re-expanding, I guess. That was the thing with the gearbox fluid on these things, on the Borgwana B35s and 65s. There's a, a seal on the back of them which dries out with lack of use and the first time you use it it can go and dump all of its, all of its fluid on the floor which is a little bit embarrassing as the, um, as the seals have, have dried out and stopped being uh, seals anymore. Basically they're just dry shriveled old husks of themselves. Anyway, the other night I was out enjoying this thing up and down the road, literally only out for five ten minutes just enjoying the thing and the, the noise it makes is just fabulous. However, I did notice I just walked the camera back into the aerial of the MX-5. Um, yeah, however, I did notice one time, I did put my foot down just to kind of push it and see if the kick down would work. And I noticed a little kind of puff of smoke out the back. Oh, well, that's not good on a brand new engine. And I was going to have a little investigation of that. But as I pulled into the drive, stopped and got out to have a quick look around, I noticed a bad thing. There appears to be oil running out from underneath the engine. I couldn't obviously open the bonnet because the bonnet, although it had been functioning, is no longer functioning. So I'm going to have to unbolt the bonnet again to get in there and find out what is leaking. All right, let's move this thing back a wee bit so I've got room to work between here and the fence. Oh, that thing sounds so good. Reverse slash park. Not got a lot of room between me and the Mini, so be careful. You can see there where it was dripping. In fact, it still was dripping a tiny bit, but I think that's only after the engine started because this is all soaked in. So those two are just brand new and fresh. Now, this bonnet, I had got it to the point where it would, if you give it a good little wiggle, it would undo. Now it won't. Right, so we're back in the engine bay and it's now a game of hunt the leak. Now, first thing I've just noticed is this, this bolt for the alternator has worked its way, way loose while we've been driving it. So that's a curious one to tighten up. I'll do that in a second. Secondly, looking underneath the car before, it was running off the front cross member by the look of it. So I assume it's somewhere down here. So it's not easy to see. It's quite wet underneath the oil filter. Is the oil filter loose perhaps? Very wet down there. Gosh, can you see that? This big bracket for the power steering pump, that's soaking in oil there. Uh, okay. Coolant is actually quite way down, but then these always do seem to blow a bit out. I must get that catch can attached to it. Well, let's see how much oil, if any, we've got still in this car. I assume this is the right dipstick for it. <laughs> we are smack dab in the middle just there, which is good, and it's lovely and clean as well which is also good. Right, that's tightened up again. Now, I've no idea why I used an Allen key bolt in there, because it's a massive pain in the bum to take care of. When I get around to changing that, I will put something different in there. Right, now, I think the best thing to do is going to be start the engine, idle it, and just try and see where something's leaking out of. There's plenty of oil in there. We're not going to starve it of oil doing that for two minutes. And now the squally rain that was produced has started, and I'm very, very glad indeed to have this little shelter here to be underneath. It was so nice this morning, I was actually out in the MX-5 with the roof down, uh, driving around. And that was just so nice. And now it's, well, you can barely see the hills over there. I'm looking for anything that's like glistening. Considering the rate it was actually pouring out when I was uh, looking at it earlier, I'm surprised I can't see anything now. Oh, 
Oh, why is it stalled? That's weird. That's very odd. Still showing a fair bit of fuel just there. Uh, come on, car. The sound of that buzzing make, I actually do wonder if it's run out of petrol again. And the fuel gauge is now, I know it's going down, I was gonna say, is, is it pegging zero when it's on about a quarter? But the sound, can you hear the fuel pump? That's the empty pump sound. That's not the full pump sound. I think we're out of petrol again. Which gives me some idea of the economy of this vehicle. As in, <laughs> it hasn't got any. There is no economy whatsoever. It's just bad. Okay, we'll see if there's any, um, any oil on the floor after that. Incidentally, I did just go make myself a cup of tea in the new Spirito de Punto mug, which is the one celebrating 30 years of both the Fiat Punto and the Alpha 145. Uh, beautiful artwork by very talented Mr. Jalco. Um, available over on furiousdriving.co.uk. Please buy some, we've got to pay the artist. Now I have proof of concept tested that these work perfectly with both tea and coffee and I'm reliably assured they're also fully compatible with hot chocolate and Bovril. Now, is there anything dribbling onto the floor now? No, okay, that's, that's really good. So now I'm actually looking for a leak Nothing is leaking. I'm just kind of thinking, could it be as simple as that something was needing to be soaked in oil and then having been driven a bit, it's now become soaked in oil and now it's, it's swollen up as it's meant to? Now, interestingly, the senders do appear to be tight and so does the oil filter, but touching the oil filter, my hand now looks like that, which is curious. There's not really anything directly above that to be leaking oil. So I don't know where the hell it's coming from. Righty hokey cokey, we are back in the Rover with some fresh petrol, a gallon of fresh petrol in the tank. And do you hear that softer, slower clicking? That's the noise it makes when it's actually pumping petrol through. So, turn the key. And we're alive again. So that's kind of a good news, bad news situation. The good news being that, well, we're out of petrol, so it's just a simple fix. Bad news being the fuel gauge doesn't work. <laughs> so don't know if that means the bottom point is really too low or the sender is broken. Either way, need to be aware of that. Also need to be aware that, crikey, that didn't go very far on a gallon of petrol. Wow, that's um, thirsty. Obviously needs to be tuned still. There's, there's tuning to be done. Right, let's go back and look for oil leaks some more. Let's get under the sunshine because it's really chilly under there in the shade. Right, let's have a look. A looky loo. I love how smoothly this thing idles, it's beautiful. So naturally, now I'm actually looking for the oil leak, it's not dripping even slightly and there are no telltale trails of anything. I believe the phrase is suboptimal. So while that idles and hopefully gets up to temperature and the oil gets thin enough that it's able to leak again, which I'm assuming is what the issue is, I'm gonna talk about what I was planning to do today, which is these side stripes, because on the other side, when the car was painted many moons ago, the painter, um, well, he didn't put all the holes in. He left the holes in some places on the wing and on this door, but he didn't put the holes in this door or in this front wing. And I was always vaguely terrified of drilling holes in my lovely new paint, which incidentally has been scratched. I had one of those big green storage tents on the, here on the driveway. I had one for absolutely years, no problems at all. Then I bought a larger one that could house two cars and a big storm blew up, blew it over the fence into the field behind and clipped on my nice new paint on this car on the way over, so that was um, not a great investment. Anyway, are you leaking it? And also, while I've been uh, just waiting for it to warm up, I thought, hang on, I'll get distracted in the meantime. Idle speed is still a bit too high. I've just taken it down one turn on each side. These screws just here are the fast idle screws on these SUs. So I'll give it a turn, I'm just one-handed and looking through a camera. It's a full turn on that one and also to match it on the second carburetor. No, nope, that's not fast enough. Turn it back off. Trying to get to just under a thousand RPM. There we go. 
If that's now not stalling, that sounds a bit happier at idle. We've got about 900 RPM there, maybe 800. I think we're good there. Might use marginally less fuel while it's idling in the driveway now. And still, it's not leaking oil, which is, <laughs> I say frustrating, I've not got an oil leak. It's a weird thing to say, but um, yeah, I can't fix it if I can't find it. success I, I suppose. I've turned the engine off and now I've got the puddle back again so at least I can have a bit of a squiz around to see where it's coming from. I think it's coming from the sump gasket running down the sump and then dripping into this cross member here and then dripping out through that little hole in the centre of it so at least it's nice and rough proof. I guess I need to just nip up those sump holder do hards I think, I hope. This would be a lot easier with a four post ramp of some kind or any kind of lift at all really frankly. Well it's actually a tiny bit loose as it goes. I don't want to over tighten these things and crush the um, the gasket too hard, but it does need to be nipped up a wee bit more. This side, just to, in case you're curious, only appears to be dribbling off this first one, possibly two bolts here, so giving them a little nip up as well and everything else. Well, there's only one way to find out if this actually worked or not, so let's go and take it down the road and back. Well, I've just been via a petrol station, put three gallons or 20 pounds of uh, super in and the needle still hasn't moved. So I'm guessing the gauge is up the squiggles. Also the temperature gauge is sitting exactly where it was as well. So I'm guessing there's an earth or something to this little dial here is uh, not happy. Anyway, let's get this thing out on the road again. Put another mile or two on it, burn off about 15 quid of fuel. You think I'm joking? Oh, I'll tell you what, this thing is just so eager to be moving, it just wants to go. Bloody hell, whoop. broke traction. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that, it just, on good tarmac, it just spun the wheel, one wheel peel. <laughs> I'm gonna pull into a little lay-by and just see if it is dribbling oil still. I hope it won't be. It's still coming down. That's really pouring out actually, geez, I'm gonna get it home quickly. Yeah, that is um, disturbingly rapid, that oil leak. I mean, it's not gushing out, it's like a head wound, it looks worse than it is kind of thing. But there is a lot of oil coming out in a kind of worrying manner. Now, someone complained in the last video, you couldn't hear how good the engine sounded on the video. And at the moment, without all the door cars and things, there is a bit more rattle than I would like in this car, but, I can assure you this engine is oh, so, so creamy, lovely, smooth. It's just a teething problem. It's just a little kind of niggly things that we've got to work through to make it not be bad, not be terrible. And the fact it's pouring oil out at that kind of rate means it's okay to use on short distances, but you wouldn't want to take it on a road trip. Good news, bad news again. I've been fiddling with the hinge and I've put some shims under there. I call them shims, it makes Porsches sound posh so that the uh, bonnet lines up better. And now the bonnet appears to open and close properly. However, that oil leak is quite significant. Right, let's try this again. I love how this just kind of lurches the entire car and a rumble like thunder. No, what I've done, I've been back round again. I've nipped up, I found two more, um, sump studs that I've missed first time round. Give everything a second nip up. I'm hoping that's going to be enough to, uh, um, I'm hoping that's legacy oil as well. Which we'll see. This starts getting faster and faster, this dripping. I know we've got a problem. Oh, it's only little at the moment. We'll come back to that. Anyway, I started talking about the side trims anyway. What I was saying was, I've got these stainless side trims for all of the other side of the car, which need a good clean up. And I've also got both of these for the front wings. Of course, I need a bit of a polish up. 
and I was going to go and mount them all today and terrifying as it is to drill holes in the, the body bodywork, probably in the wrong place, I've only got 10 clips and that's barely enough for the holes that are existing in the car, never mind the other ones, so I'm going to have to order them and it's bank holiday weekend so I might just set about cleaning these things up in a moment. Another thing, people keep saying am I going to get a 4600 uh, badge made up and yes I'd absolutely love to and I've got a couple of spare 3500 badges that you know, could be used as donors. Thing is though, I don't know who would do this. I'm not sure where to get this done. I don't know if maybe I can get like a vinyl print done that would stick on there, but this is aluminium. It's basically just brushed aluminium with the printing directly onto it. So tricky one to make it look like the original. Just as a quick aside, I'd mentioned a second ago the bonnet release works. I've only been doing it with the uh, cable through the thing up until now, but look, that pops up and then Oh, where's the thing gone? It works, it actually functions as a bonnet release, which means I'm not gonna spend 60 odd quid on that tiny bit of metal just there, and it functions. I'm gonna find the grill out there the garage and pop that back this evening as well. The car will have its face back. Right, well, last night, super happy. Put the car's face back on, looked amazing. Drove it all the way to the gym in the evening. Turns out the headlights are absolutely terrible on it, but at least they shine and they turn on, which is a thing. Um, unfortunately, this morning, I've gone to go and move it and do the side strips, and it's cranking like the keys aren't in it. We're in neutral. That's better. Weird, just did not want to crank over a second ago. And incidentally, yes, it is still losing oil. This is from overnight, so I'm guessing it's probably gonna want a new sump gasket. Right, so this is something I've been dreading doing for a long time, so I've got to follow this pattern of uh, holes drilled through here, so I've marked up with the uh, masking tape, so. What I believe to is the right size, four and a half millimeters, I think it worked out at. I'll do one pilot one just to check. I cannot tell you how unhappy doing this makes me. <sighs> now the question is, is this the right size drill bit for those little clippy things? Yep, that's the right size. Now fitting these little clips is something that looks like it was designed specifically to damage the car. You have to give them a bit of a tap to break the plastic seal that kind of, or the way they're moulded together. Right, before we put the chrome or stainless strip on, let's give it a bit of a, a twickle with a uh, diamond bright metal and chrome polish. Now I was debating for a long time whether actually to put this on or fill in this holes on the other side instead, but having sort of seen it with the, the plain side and with the trim side, I think it does kind of look better with a bit of trim on it. Because the Series 1 cars didn't have any trim. This is a Series 2 thing to add it. That's a lot better, isn't it? Shiny, not shiny, shiny, not shiny. Now let's hope these things are level enough to actually fit on. That's upside down. I can only tell it's upside down because it's dried on paint from this uh, second hand being previously enjoyed. There we go, a bit of stainless. The trick is to line up along the top and give it kind of a smack down the palm of your hand and that clips it in place. I don't know why they have to invent such extremely violent methods of fixing these cars. Now which I've got enough to do one more panel. Should do the rear wing or should do the door? Let's do the door. And there you go, we've got trim on two panels now. Only two to go. Last little thing for today, and this is gonna be upsetting for some and very exciting for others. A few of the Roverati out there were very excited when I revealed I had genuine clear front indicators for the car. And so I've got myself a set of these Auxito amber turn signal bulbs, which are the same things I've got in the um, MX-5. So I'll pop that one out and pop that one in. Well, I can put one of these resistors in the wiring later on. Now I know you can get an actual replacement uh, relay for modern cars so that you can uh, have an LED in there and it'll work properly. This car doesn't have that kind of uh, relay in it. It's not that kind of old technology. There we go. And I cannot tell you how rare that particular item is to have on a PC. I mean, it is insanely rare. I should be putting some kind of lock on that. Well, check that out. It is blinking a little faster, but it is significantly brighter. I'm trying to remember if I put LEDs in the back of this car or not, because that is such a difference. And the little glow worm on the passenger side is barely going to get noticed by other people these days. Well, there you go. And I've got to say, I really like that new look. It's very, very clean, quite modern. I'll stick some different wheels on this thing eventually. That is going to look so cool. 
Uh, some people didn't really like it, but I think this looks absolutely spectacular. I don't dislike the amber lens look, because I thought that was pretty cool as well, but that, kind of unique. I like that a lot. There aren't many P6s running around with clear front indicator lenses. That is much excite. And of course, don't forget, if you want to grab yourself some Oxito LED bulbs to your car, then head over to the link in the description below where you get a little bit of a discount, I think it's 10 15% for using my referral code. But well, there we go. This is the latest update on the P6 V8. It's not perfect, but it's certainly getting there and lots of little improvements are happening along the way. Uh, well, this is my Easter weekend kind of sorted as far as this car is concerned for the time being, because I think I'm going to have to go and find myself a new uh, sump gasket to solve that leaky problem. But at least it's only dribbling out a small enough amount that I can drive it around a bit and keep on using the thing. Then after 100 miles, 200 miles or so, it's going to want a complete oil change anyway, because we've done the running in oil, new engine, that kind of thing. So at that point, we can take the oil sump off having dumped the oil out and clean it all up, dry it all out, fresh gasket, and that should hopefully solve that little leak. But I don't want to do that right now because I'm still doing the running in period. So yeah, it's, it's lots going on. But we are getting there. The car is improving nicely and I'm really quite enjoying having a rather lovely V8 Rover. And I'm hoping you're enjoying watching the thing as well. So thank you for watching. If, you have, if you've enjoyed this, please hit like and of course subscribe. We need those big numbers. We are getting close to that 100,000 mark, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, please head over to furiousdriving.co.uk. Grab yourself a, either a Rover P6 or a Spirito de Pinto mug or something. Helps keep this stuff rolling along quite nicely. And yeah, thank you for watching. See you later. Goodbye. Happy Easter.